Well, good morning. We're back in Daniel chapter 4, reading from verse 27. Therefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by practicing righteousness and your iniquities by showing mercy to the oppressed, that there may perhaps be a lengthening of your prosperity. When Jonah went to Nineveh and proclaimed that it was just a matter of time before God's judgment would fall on that great city, the city turned to God in repentance and judgment was stayed. And we need to understand that when God warns us of judgment, when God promises judgment, it's an opportunity for us. It's an opportunity to understand that we should run to him, that we should come to him in repentance, that we should turn to him and we will avoid what God is saying. Likewise, when the Israelites were coming out of Egypt, God promised them that he would give the land of Canaan to them. Yet when it came to entering in, they rebelled against him and refused to go in and and take what God had promised to them by faith. And so none of that generation inherited the promise that God had made to them. None of them received it. And so there's this question about how we respond to God speaking to us that comes through in our passage. Daniel says to Nebuchadnezzar, hey, this dream that's from God, consider this. Let my, listen to my counsel, let my counsel penetrate your thinking and turn to God. Choose to stop oppressing. Choose to live out your days in righteousness and maybe God will relent and your prosperity will continue. Now, the writer of the Hebrews says to us, when you hear God's voice, don't harden your heart. When we hear God's voice, when God speaks to us, it requires a response from us. I love that story of Paul as he's on the road to Damascus. Jesus encounters him and Paul falls to the ground and he cries out, Who are you, Lord? And Jesus says to him, I am Jesus and and then commissions Paul. And Paul later on reflects that he considers the whole of his life up until that point rubbish, irrelevant, in in comparison with knowing Christ and serving Christ. And the reality of his response to God by faith, his owning Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, has echoed through every generation since that moment. There is incredible fruitfulness that comes when we respond to God. And there is such sadness and lack that happens when we refuse to respond to God. Now we know that Nebuchadnezzar doesn't respond. He doesn't repent in this moment. And judgment does fall on him. But even then, that judgment brings him to salvation, brings him to his knees. That's the reason why he's writing this letter to the peoples of his empire. Jesus said that we are to abide in the vine, that we are the branches and he is the vine. We're to remain connected. We're to draw our life from him. And his voice speaking to us is part, is key to that continuing relationship where we walk out what God is saying. God God is speaking to us. God is speaking to you right now. He's a speaking God. He spoke through the prophets. He spoke through Jesus when he was alive. He speaks to us through the scriptures. He speaks to us by the Holy Spirit, in our intuition, in our consciences, through the prophetic. God is a speaking God. He's speaking to you and to me today. How will you respond? Will you grab hold of it by faith like Paul? Or will you miss it? Will you walk past it? Don't miss his voice today. God is speaking to you. Take a few moments just to consider, what are you saying to me today? Lord Jesus, how should I respond? Show me how to respond in faith, how to lay hold of the promises that you give me that I might walk into the fruitfulness that you have for me. Ponder those things, pray into those things, and I'll look forward to seeing you in a few days' time.